Friday the 13th was produced and directed by Sean S. Cunningham, who had previously worked with filmmaker Wes Craven on the film The Last House on the Left. Cunningham, inspired by John Carpenter's Halloween, wanted Friday the 13th to be shocking, visually stunning, and make you jump out of your seat. Friday the 13th began its life as nothing more than a title. Initially, A Long Night at Camp Blood was a working title during the writing process, but Cunningham believed in his Friday the 13th moniker and quickly rushed out to place an ad in Variety. Worried that someone else owned the rights to the title and wanting to avoid potential lawsuits, Cunningham thought it would be best to find out immediately. He commissioned the New York advertising agency to develop his concept of the Friday the 13th logo, which consisted of big block letters bursting through a pane of glass. There was a film called Friday the 13th The Orphan, and it was moderately successful, but the problem was finally resolved. The script was written by Victor Miller. The idea of Jason appearing at the end of the film was initially not used in the original script, but was actually suggested by makeup designer Tom Savini. Robbie Morgan was cast as Annie Phillips. Robbie Morgan was not auditioning for the film when she was offered the role. She only appeared on set for a day to shoot all of her scenes. Peter Brower was cast as Steve Christie. Lori Bartram was cast as Brenda Jones. Janine Taylor was cast as Marcy Cunningham. Mark Nelson was cast as Ned Rubenstein. Harry Crosby was cast as Bill Brown. Harry Crosby was the son of Bing Crosby. Harry was attempting to make it a go as an actor without leveraging any connections available to him as the son of Bing. Kevin Bacon, a struggling actor back then, would be cast as Jack. Adrian King auditioned for the roles of Brenda, Marcy, and Annie before being cast as Alice Hardy. She did not want to be in the film because of the graphic violence at first, but changed her mind eventually. Sally Field had also auditioned for the role of Alice Hardy. Shelley Winters was the first choice for Pamela Voorhees, but she wasn't interested. Estelle Parsons was originally signed on to play Mrs. Voorhees, but eventually declined. Her agent cited that the film was too violent and did not know what kind of actress would play such a part. Also considered was Louise Lazar and Dorothy Malone for the role of Mrs. Voorhees. Betsy Palmer would go on to play Pamela Voorhees. This was Betsy Palmer's first film since The Last Angry Man in 1959. Betsy Palmer said that if it were not for the fact that she was in desperate need of a new car, she would never have accepted the role of Pamela Voorhees. In fact, after she read the script, she called the movie a piece of crap. Over the years, however, Pamela did warm up to the film as it made her more famous than infamous. Walt Gorney was cast as Crazy Ralph. Sean Cunningham wanted to cast his son Noel Cunningham as Jason, but his wife Susan Cunningham wouldn't let him do this. Ari Lehman was determined to land the role of Jason Voorhees. According to Lehman, he went in very intense and afterward Cunningham told him he was perfect for the part. Harry Manfredini would compose the score and would also come up with Jason's signature sound. The filmmakers never intended to make this the launching pad for the franchise that followed. According to Victor Miller, Jason was only meant as a plot device and not intended to continue on his mother's grisly work. Victor Miller had originally given Jason the name of Josh. After deciding that it sounded too nice, he changed it to Jason after a school bully. The original plan was for Alice to be a reoccurring hero in the series, continually facing off against Jason again and again in sequel after sequel, kind of like Laurie Strode was a reoccurring hero in the Halloween series, but after Adrian King was socked by a Friday the 13th fan during the release of the original film, she said she wanted out, so her character was killed off at the beginning of the sequel. The MPAA told the producers of Friday the 13th to scale back on the gore for the sequel, since they regretted the amount of gore they had gotten through in the original. This is why Part 2 is much less gory than Part 1. The film was shot in and around the townships of Hardwick, Blairstown, and Hope, New Jersey in September 1979. The camp scenes were shot on the working Boy Scout camp, Camp Nobi Bosco, which is located in Hardwick, New Jersey. The camp is still standing and still works as a summer camp. They were only allowed to use the camp after making a sizable donation to the Boy Scouts of America. Most of the crew and several cast members also lived in the camp's cabins while filming the movie. Filming lasted 28 days. Friday the 13th was released on May 9th, 1980. The film made $39 million on a budget of $550,000. 
Rotten Tomatoes reports that 59% of critics gave the film a positive review based on 50 reviews. Its most vocal critic was Gene Siskel, who in his review called Cunningham one of the most despicable creatures ever to infest the movie business. He was so angry at Betsy Palmer's role in the movie that he published her address in his magazine and encouraged people to write her and protest her. He published the wrong address though. It was the 18th highest grossing film that year, facing stiff horror film competitions from such high profile releases as The Shining, Dressed to Kill, The Fog, and Prom Night. Friday the 13th was released on VHS on December 7, 1992, and on DVD on October 19, 1999, and on Blu-ray on February 3, 2009. And the complete history of Friday the 13th Camp Crystal Lake Memories book was released on October 1, 2006. DVD and Blu-ray versions of the book were released on September 13, 2013. The film was featured in many DVD and Blu-ray special edition box sets. I hope you've enjoyed this brief look at Friday the 13th. Join me next time as we take a brief look at Friday the 13th Part 2.